Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, doing a movie review this week. It's a fast-paced, intense thriller that came out on August 4th, 2017. Yes, I did saw the movie a long time ago, but I saw it again uh, after all this time. Simply called Kidnap. Yes, this is my DVD copy of the film, which is an HD print that I just found, actually taken from the original distributor, Relativity Media, which happens to be the original 95-minute cut. And I actually provided my own features that I put in, like I, most of which I, I got from YouTube, like the trailers, the TV spots, and just a few interviews and b-roll behind the scenes um, just to fit the disc perfectly it's the best I could do because it wasn't much I, I wish there were more but that's probably the best I could do um, another reason why I did that was because well I'm gonna give you a controversy behind this now Kidnap, of course, it's a Holly Berry uh, film. She's also the producer, by the way. When uh, the movie came out in theaters, it was being released by a new distributor called Aaron Pictures. It was a new company, which was actually formerly known as Claris Entertainment. So, yeah, the same company that gave us films like And So It Goes and even Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return, yeah, that wasn't a good uh, Wizard of Oz adaptation. <laughs> well, this film was originally released by Relativity Media, as I mentioned, yeah, which is a production company owned by Ryan Kavanaugh. It was going for bankruptcy problems. The film was shot in 2014 in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, with some of it being filmed in Seidel. Uh, they finished it uh, within the course of 20 days and then they were going to be scheduled to release it on October 9th, 2015. But due to the bankruptcy problems they had with the company, they had to shelve it for two years until another distributor had picked it up. That's why. And I think that was a shame. Unfortunately, after the film finally got released on Blu-ray by Universal Studios Home Entertainment, because they must have had to deal with Avron, what was supposed to have what it seems to be the one that came out in theaters is a 95-minute cut, turned out to be the 81-minute cut. So everything was cut down all 14 minutes of the footages were gone trying to make this movie more faster pace you know try to speed up as far as it's concerned and that's just what caused people to get angry and I had to give a shout out to a youtuber which I did add on my channel um, by the name of uh, Matt Roller aka Rambo Ralph for Life because he was one of the few people who actually gave it a positive review and and saw the movie from himself enough that he wanted to pick it up on Blu-ray when it comes out but then he got furious because the film itself got cut out that's a shame so he was trying to find a way to find some other places that might have the original cut intact that's why he had to do several videos about it and I had to write down a comment on that telling them that yes I finally saw the movie too I saw it online streaming that was the the original cut f directly from its original distributor Relativity Media and yeah it's really deplorable why, why would they want to cut down a movie that was already a fast-paced movie as it is I mean geez they didn't like some of the scenes that were in the film is that why that's what I don't understand either and I guess I begin to find out that maybe it's because of Netflix, because they 
they own the rights uh, worldwide, but not in North America. Next thing you know, um, there was a North American uh, Canadian release that has the original 95 minute cuts and actually had a few more features joining them, unlike the Universal release. So he's the one who picked that up. I wish I could pick that one up too, but maybe if I ever you know, take a chance at it, maybe go on eBay or Amazon.com for the Canadian uh, site, maybe I might take my chances on buying that on Blu-ray. But for now, that's why I had to make a copy directly from that particular uh, HD print uh, that was online. So I had to download it because of it. I had no choice. Because I, I really deserve something that's worth watching. And yeah, the movie got negative reviews from critics. I mean, granted though, people say it's it's a serviceable late summer diversion. Others call it, it was a messy plot. <laughs> they say, and so on and so forth. And I just don't understand. I'm sorry. If you ask me, this was a way better film than Holly Berry's previous film called The Call, you know, where she played a 911 operator trying to track down the kidnappers who kidnap uh, a young teenager. It was played by Abigail Breslin. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> and that, and plus they complain about the editing in this movie, which it only showed some a few edit scenes of through the, uh, the freeway scenes, among other, among a few others too, and then they're showing like flashbacks. So to me, the editing wasn't that bad at all. Most of the film was pretty slow paced, as far as I'm concerned, considering it's 95 minute mark. So I don't know. I mean, the the people didn't watch the call to know that that film had terrible editing. Exactly, man. I mean, there are a lot of worse films that had horrible editing. The Kidnap is not the only one that had to deal with. And I'm sorry, but Kidnap at least had better editing compared to this. But they're just going for the adrenaline rush. That's what they're trying to do. You know, try to be as intense as ever. And what's really interesting was that they actually got locals playing the kidnappers because it's not your typical cliche types, you know, the ones that suck. You actually get one that's actually quite like ordinary people that you never know of. So that's what I expected. Not only that, but Holly Berry's character, who's a waitress and a single mother, is a very strong character. And people make fun of her uh, acting in this movie, saying, even though she had to say, oh God, several times, and I know she talks to herself, trying to pray that she'll be able to find her son that's being kidnapped by these two couples. I mean, think about it, man. You would be in that situation, too. So, I, I really don't understand that, either. I mean, to me, this is one of her better films. I mean, she had a lousy track record uh, in recent years, uh, with the exception of X-Men, uh, the X-Men movies that she did. Maybe a few others, but... I mean, I, I know it's hard these days, because, you know, she won an Oscar for Monsters Ball in 2002. And she's trying to do her best to do a lot of better work, but she wants up picking some really shitty scripts, like... For example, Catwoman. But either way, you know. Plus, she's also one of the producers of the film, too, so she basically put the money and effort to make this movie work. And I think it, and just going for the, the take in and breakdown vibe to it, yeah, breakdown was the movie with uh, Kurt Russell, Caden Quinn, Brillin. Yeah, it was about him trying to find his wife that's being kidnapped. That movie. 
So it's going for that similar buy. The movie only made uh, $34.8 million. It wasn't exactly a hit from its $21 million budget. Um, so I didn't even get a chance to see it in theaters still, but I did actually, as I mentioned already, saw it online streaming. So that's the only way I saw it. But I never had a chance to pick up the Blu-ray, but maybe someday I might, if, if that ever happens, I, I might track down the Canadian Blu-ray release. But. Okay, uh, with that aside, um, let's review the movie. It stars Holly Berry, Sage Correa, Chris McGinn, Lou Temple, Jason Winston George, Christopher Berry, Aaron Shriver, Curtis Bedford, and Carmela Wiley. It's written by Nate Lee and it's directed by Louis Prido, and it's a Hispanic uh, writer and director. The movie begins when we meet a diner waitress who's also a single mother named Carla Dyson, who's played by Hailey Berry, lives with her six-year-old son Frankie, played by Sage Carrera, despite her Bowman in a custody with her estranged husband, yeah, we, which we never saw in the movie, but it does explain in the story, as we saw. So, just when she was doing her shifts, you know, trying to serve all the customers breakfast, ask what they want, but of course, you know, some of them are pretty shallow, as it seems, <laughs> including that one woman who um, is trying to play that uh, the same game that, you know, that famous scene in the movie uh, Five Easy Pieces, you know, with Jack Nicholson trying to uh, order what he wants, but he couldn't order what he was getting because there was no substitutes. So that's why he had to confront the waitress. <laughs> which caused him to get into bigger trouble by getting kicked out along with yeah, his uh, the along with um, his friend and and the two uh, girls that, that he uh, picked up <sighs> yeah just just actually knocked everything out of the table and just <laughs> just got out well she was sort of doing that too um, I need a little bit more of milk and to put some of it in my thighs and then Carla just says I think you need a little help of it yourself or something like that <laughs> yeah there you go okay. Carla decided to take Frankie to the local carnival just when she's trying to get everything patched up uh, once they enter you know because they you know frankly actually has a, a toy voice recorder taken from a children's TV show and he was playing with it, you know, just uh, record some voices such as Choo Choo! And so I had to record it uh, with her mom, Carla. And she says, Choo Choo! They also love to play hide and seek where they always yell, Marco! Polo! Marco! Polo! <laughs> yeah. So then, um, she temporarily leaves her son in order to, to take an important phone call from her lawyer that she was working with, only to find out that her husband wanted more custody. We also learned that her husband actually has a girlfriend, sort of on. So then her phone was about to um, run out of battery, but then when Carla returns, that's when she began to find out that her son is missing only leaving his toy voice recorder behind on the bench. So she tries to search everywhere trying to ask everyone that they actually had spotted uh, Frankie. No one has. But then suddenly she spotted uh, two couples uh, both are named Margo and Terry Vicky and they are the kidnappers who kidnap Frankie as they take Frankie inside their uh, turquoise green Ford Mustang GT. And that's when the chase was on. You know, when 
Carla was about to race uh, against uh, the kidnappers, who kidnapped her son. Suddenly, she, she accidentally dropped her phone. I mean, just after she was about to, you know, go on top of the car, trying to catch up, but she fell off and, you know, with her purse, and and then she she had to run as fast as she can into her uh, Chrysler Town and Country. Uh, SUV, but yes, she lost her phone uh, right in the middle of, of the parking lot, and she had to race as fast as she can just to get to them. And that's when, yeah, she noticed that her phone was missing, so then she had to go all the way straight into the freeway just to go after them. And that's what led to a an adrenaline rush and very intense, you know, the, like a huge chase scene between the rest of the other cars around. They actually dumped out the toolbox right in the middle of the road and, and started to, uh, it was ready to hit uh, Carla, but then she passes through so she doesn't get run over. But then, and they even throw in a tire as well. And the tire actually went straight into the other SUV and got flipped over and yes there was a lot of uh, there were some car crashes here and there um, you may think that the car the cops weren't around actually they did the cops were on the other side of the freeway so she's hoping that she'll be able to get a um, a radio um, traffic to see if, if they actually mentioned about what just happened there so hopefully they'll they'll get the report so she had to race as fast as she can trying to get to them, but then they they actually started making threats towards her. I mean, by actually grabbing the knife, and they tell them to pull over straight to the uh, the grassy field, so where they'll find them. Or if you don't go there, you know, trying to get passed by, your son's going to get uh, sl sliced with the knife. So they were given that direction so she had to go all the way you know she had to pray to God and hopefully Frankie will be safe no matter what happens so <laughs> and yes I know I mean people make fun of her saying oh God several times but hey if you, again I if you're in that situation I I think you'll pretty much say the same thing too so once uh, she wants to going straight into the the grassy field that's when she was actually waiting for the police to arrive so that way they could chase after the Ford Mustang GT but it winds up chasing her instead which that's where we meet a a motorcyclist cop going by and, and then that's when that's when both Margo and Vicky just crashes straight into the the cop into straight into her SUV that actually causes him to get killed. Once they stop by at the grassy field, Carla confronts uh, Terry and demands the release of her son as long as she gives her the money to the kidnappers. Terry actually was about to grab a knife and was ready to chase her all the way back, so she had to drive. She had to back up her SUV and so she doesn't get caught by them. And yes, uh, Terry actually it was, uh, just has a loss of breath right there when he ran. So, Marco gets out of the car and forces Carla to ride with her, who claims that they will get uh, $10,000 uh, ransom in exchange for her son upon to reach to their destination. But Margaret suddenly orders Carla to follow the car, which then, once they reach the, the tunnel, so this is where Margot starts to go after Carla and just uh, strangle her with uh, the seat belt. And that's when, uh, that's when Carla was about to take her out of the, the SUV and leave it there at the tunnel and then Margo just tries to chase after it but 
Carla continues to follow the car, which would lead to um, bigger problems because her gas was about to run out. It's true because she won't be able to go after him and will wind up being stopped right in the middle of, of the road until she lost the car. So she had to continue driving. We actually spotted some flashbacks where she was with her son, especially that one scene well, during the freeway, um, in the middle of the film, just when she was about to chase after him, she actually found the voice recorder that was left behind, starts listening to it. That's where we hear Margot's voice directly from the recorder when Frankly was using it. And um, this is where it explains where her mother is and that's when Margot decided to take him along with uh, Terry. So she continues to go for the chase but then she f just trying to ask some locals around tell her to call 911. She's very smart too. She tells everyone to call 911 to find out that her son's been kidnapped. She tries to tell the cop that that uh, her son's been kidnapped and everything. So then they, so hoping that, just repeat what she has to say and then tell them to call and, and then she had to go right on her way until she began to spot uh, a crash that's about to happen on the side of the freeway and it turns out to be the car, the, the Mustang GT. But then they escaped. So now, um, she had to go all the way to the sheriff's office and tries to confront the and tries to talk to the sheriff that her son's been kidnapped and is trying to tell everything that uh, they know of and they're trying to hope to find a way to actually help her and you know, try to track down the, the kidnappers to find her son. So she's she decided to make a phone call to her husband telling him about uh, her son's been kidnapped. And then she begins to look around through all these uh, missing posters, and this is where she says, uh, "That's what all all these people did. They waited." So she got out of the office and decided to search to see if if, um, if Terry, who took uh, Frankie, might be somewhere around on the streets. And that's when she found the jacket that's that's thrown away at the trash can and then she begins to spot a black Volvo so they switch cars well this time it's... so they had to have a chase they accidentally ran over a pedestrian a female pedestrian and she was I mean hoping that she was about to help her out she didn't actually I mean she got knocked unconscious you know because she crashes through uh, another car and then her airbags popped up then she while well, leave her leave the female pedestrian behind she decided to go straight at the black Volvo as soon as she, as she can but then she stopped right in the middle of the forest and that's when her gas uh, ran out Carla wants up inside the truck um, of a local man until the black bubble suddenly crashes straight at, at him, knocked down the the driver, and she's the only one that survived and and tries to get out of the, the truck and tries to go after um, Terry, which Terry has the shotgun ready to shoot her, and then this is when she went straight to her SUV and starts to back up, you know, with Terry about to go after her with the shotgun, just shooting. You know, she, she even tries to hide inside her SUV. So Terry just shoots, grabs uh, Carla, and then Carla decided to back up her SUV all the way straight into the tree. Actually kills him. He begins to uh, tell Terry where's her son. She found uh, a wallet of his and begin to find out the location where he lives. 
So he finds a destination only two miles behind, goes straight to the house, trying to find where Frankie is, and that's where we spot Margo. She has a dog, too. So she just came by just to buy some pizza, um, you know, just for them to eat. Of course, trying to find where uh, Terry is, but no such luck. But then, by the time um, Margo, but by the time Carla went straight into the shed, you know, the garage, that's when she spots Frankie. But it turns out Frankie isn't the only one that's kidnapped. There were two girls inside the, the pipe. So she's about to take them out of there until Margo arrives and starts to go after um, you know, Carla and Frankie. Because you know, Frankie was, was only the one to get out of there as fast as they can. They hide out. They wind up um, going under the river. You know, trying to, um, just when they start out the, the boat, hoping that they were in there, but they're not. And then Carla was about to go after Margo, you know, tries to, um, tries to kill her and drown her completely. And hoping that, uh, hoping they'd be able to get out of there as soon as they can so then they can get out the two girls and then this is where we got the twist. which led to all that. So now um, she has to save um, her son and the two girls' life. So she's already there. They got news reports and everywhere around saying that she's a hero. Since she did everything she could to save him. And that's the movie. <laughs> Uh, I also love the end credits too, where they just show like photos of, uh, of both uh, Carla and Frankie together. You know, they're just having the best time of their lives, no matter what, while they're playing the music in the background. Uh, there's also the intro where they actually show like home movies of, of Frankie. You know, when you know, when he was a kid, you know, like a baby, and then he grew up. Um, all the way until he became six years old. <laughs> you know, he actually dresses up as uh, Woody for Halloween too. Yeah, Woody from Toy Story and and many others. So. Uh, definitely was intense, um, fast-paced, edge of your seat type of thriller that really works, in my opinion. Um, I thought Holly Berry did a strong performance in recent years. I mean. Granted, though, you know, they're not giving her a break these days, but I'm glad, you know, this this was definitely worth it. I mean, she does the best she could, and I'm glad she did because, you know, she had a hard time trying to search for her son, you know, ab having to deal with this, this, um, <laughs> having to deal with this uh, scary uh, chase scene, you know, between her and the kidnappers. Trying to get what they want, you know, try to pay money ransom, but couldn't because the, the chase just keeps going on and on. I mean, she even tells uh, all the locals and everyone, the cops, the sheriff, and everyone to actually track down. She even calls the cops uh, at, near the end of the movie when she was at uh, Marco and Terry's house, too. So, she's smart. So hoping they'll track them down and be able to stop them, but also have um, her son safe. You know, hoping she'll be all right, and knowing that there's that he's not the only one. And I also love the lines that that was said to uh, to Carl. I also love the lines that she said in the movie, like, "Let me tell you something." As long as he's in that car, I will not stop. No matter where you go or what you do, I'll be there. Or even at the end of the movie, which was, I know it's in the trailer as well. You took the wrong kid. 
just once he knocked out uh, the kidnapper. Well, that was a twist scene, though. Uh, again, I didn't have any problems with the editing. I thought the editing was as perfect as it can get, where they just show a close-up of of the gauge, of the go uh, of the gauge, and you see the. Um, how it speeds up, but she backs up her SUV trying to not pass them by because, you know, she did mess up a little bit. Tries to go after them as soon as they can and has all these slow mode chase scenes here around, all the cars crashing and flipping over. Interesting enough, though, that they didn't use um, any CGI whatsoever, uh, they actually used practical effects. Yes, they use a lot of stunts. A lot of stunt drivers uh, did all that. They took the risk to do whatever they can, and and uh, I was even amazed that they actually did all that. I mean, you know, out of all films we've been seeing in recent years, I mean, I'm glad they went back to going for for all these uh, stunts. That's just so impressive. That I really wish we had films like this more often. I mean, they can still do them. I mean, they've been doing them for years, but it's just, it's been a while since we ever saw one where they didn't use any green screen effects. And I could pretty much tell they didn't use any of that whatsoever because it's all done on location. They shot it in New Orleans, and it's definitely the perfect location for that. For that alone. So. And also, um,. The actor who played uh, Frankie, yes, Sage uh, Carrera, was an annoying. Yeah, he was actually a very cute son. I, I love him. I mean, you really felt bad for him, having to deal with these two. Uh, Chris McGann, along with Lou Temple, they did a, an amazing job playing the kidnappers. I mean, it's amazing that we actually get a couple that's not cliche. They don't speak much, actually. I mean, they do speak, but they don't speak as much as, as they could. But we definitely know, you know, how kidnappers can be, you know, no matter what they look like. Um, and it really worked. Um, so I, I just don't understand the criticism this movie got. But whatever, I, I guess critics never understand. Um, but I'm glad I saw the movie, and... It's great to see it again after all these years. I think it's, it can still hold up. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm proud to say that I definitely agree with uh, Matt on this review. I mean, there are times when I don't agree with him on some movies that he reviewed that I love. Or then there are films that he reviewed that I hate. But nevertheless, you know, I do agree with Matt's at times. I mean, he, he's a cool guy. I, I love his rants. Too. He also has a best friend named uh, Mike uh, yeah, Mike Brown, aka uh, OCP Communications. Yeah, he's a big fan of Robocop, just as Matt is a big fan of Rambo and, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Well, to me, I'm a huge fan of Charlie Brown and Snoopy uh, and the rest of the Peanuts gang. <laughs> so, I guess we have something in common here. <laughs> but we're, we're all individual reviewers, too. Um, and, of course, I, I definitely love Rambo, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Robocop. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the original, though. And, and all that. So that's cool. I love action movies, too. I love comedies. I love other kinds of genres. Even animation. But hey, it's cool. So, uh, to me, I enjoy Kidnap. I enjoy Halle Berry's performance. I enjoy all the adrenaline rush that it went into, all the car crashes, all the intense scenes, um, with, you know, with the mother trying to go after her son that's being kidnapped by these two couples. And she took the risk to do so, unlike many others who have, where people had to wait 
she had to take the risk and that's important so there you go that's Kipnap and I give the movie three and a half stars I mean it's not a masterpiece granted I mean it's not a four star or five star caliber but I definitely give it uh, that particular uh, rating because I felt like you know despite maybe a few issues here and there I mean having to deal with the sh the very all the customers that are shallow I think we're okay um, but the movie uh, really works in my opinion so anyway I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye